Hello everybody! Welcome to another Valheim video. Today we're going to learn about different resources that you can gather together. Valheim is a world filled with different biomes and different resources. But it's never really smart to just farm one at a time. Basically, it's almost always more effective to gather two or three kinds of resources at once than it is to just get one. That way you know what to look for, and you'll get in the habit of collecting everything together. Here we have our first pairing. Going hunting for deer, boar, and picking all the raspberries along the way. This is a great activity anytime you come across the meadows during exploration. Our next pairing will be harvesting some swamp resources. You go on an errand where you run around the swamp until you find one of these babies. Because these guys drop coal and certainly cores. And they respawn. If you're lucky, you might find a nearby structure that looks something like this. Or you'll find one of these swamp graveyards. Once you've scouted out a good location and set up a good spawn spot, you can just spend some time fighting in this area. And every time you come here, kill the Sirdlings, grab their coal, and then focus on killing the Draugr. While you're doing this, you'll also get attacked by leeches, and this is a perfect time to get one of the most valuable resources in the game, blood bags, which are necessary in order to make healing potions. Now, the Sirdling are pretty easy, but these graveyards can really pack a punch. It's very common for people to die here. These may just be Draugr, but before you know it, you may suddenly be fighting two-star Draugr, so be very careful. You might want to consider thinning the herd, so to speak and taking these and getting rid of the skeleton spawn. That way, there's only one Draugr spawner, which is way more manageable. If you're lucky, you can catch them before they see you and just one-shot them. And you can see that they respawn back really quickly, so it doesn't take long. And then when you want it all to end, you can just eliminate the spawner. By hanging out in the swamp near one of these Sirdling Core spawners, you'll get plenty of coal, Sirdling Cores, blood bags, and entrails. And you can apply this same logic in the Black Forest. While you're hunting for deer, you'll have to dodge trolls, run away from grey dwarves, and harvest lots of blueberries. You'll also find thistle. So next time you catch yourself near a Black Forest, consider running around for a bit, getting some deer meat, deer hides, blueberries, and thistle. Our next pairing is our mountain resources. The mountains is a really fun place to explore, as long as it's not blizzarding and you got something to stay warm. You can kill the drakes, and this will give you freeze glands. There's also wolves here, but don't worry too much about them. Scattered throughout the edge of the mountain, you'll find these obsidian deposits. With an iron pickaxe, you'll be able to mine them and get obsidian. As you explore the mountain, you'll also find all sorts of structures, and you can loot the chests in here as another way to get obsidian, so if you don't have the iron pickaxe, don't worry. And if you're lucky, you'll find a chest that has onion seeds in it. So here's the pairing for the mountains. You want to get freeze glands, obsidian, and onion seeds. And you can get all this stuff just by running around the mountain with an iron pickaxe and some fire arrows. Next we have our plains resources. To make this easier, to make this process simple, I recommend that you bring a bow, some arrows, and the root chest. Running around the plains is a great time to harvest cloudberries, get feathers from birds, and shoot down mosquitoes to make those powerful needle arrows. I find that just by running around the plains and looking for cloudberries, you'll see mosquitoes off in the distance. And as long as you're purposefully looking for these mosquitoes, they're actually pretty easy to catch and take care of. Oh, double teamed, oof. But as you can see with the root chest, you don't need to worry about it. If you're not too comfortable with goblins, then you might just want to run away if you encounter any of them. Now, if you stay along the coast of the plains while you're looking for cloud berries and killing death mosquito, then you're gonna actually see a lot of birds. Birds and death mosquitoes go hand in hand because you'll often be fighting a death mosquito, and then you see a bird land off in the distance. If you wait around, you'll see them come down from the sky and then just land. And the easiest way to get the birds is to stay on the coast. There seems to be a lot of birds along the coast. 
you can get a stack or two of feathers in a reasonable amount of time just by running up and down a coast like this. Running around grabbing cloudberries, needles, and shooting birds to get those all-powerful feathers. Because without feathers, you don't have arrows. And without arrows, psh, you're not a viking. Our next pairing is in the Mistlands. For this, I recommend using Fenrir gear just because you want to run away. I'm not going to recommend you fight anything. You just want to run around the Mistlands, and you're going to be looking for this mage cap, which is this blue mushroom. You'll also be looking for these mushrooms, the yellow ones, Jotun. Both of these mushrooms are farmable, so you can collect them and farm them just like the seeds that you're used to. As you'll explore, you'll also find these hares, although you'll find that they're much harder to hit than deer. They're smaller, and also, they're more jitterish. I find that it can be easier to chase them down with a knife and then just wait till they get trapped. Inevitably, they'll turn around and then you can just get them. Sometimes these things can be a huge pain to find though, so don't be surprised if you're trying to kill one of these and you find yourself getting ganked by some crazy Mislins monster. So here we have our first Mislins pairing. Pairings? I don't know how to say four. Jotunpuffs, Mage Cap, and Hair Meat and Scale. These resources are pretty cool because you can just run around in the Mislins and run away from all the monsters and you'll probably live. That's what's so great about these foraging missions. They're just a great way to explore, survey the landscape, while also collecting the basic materials that are gonna make the rest of your progression much smoother. Our next pairing involves using two iron to make a stone cutter and harvesting these Dverger buildings. If you just find one of these places, it'll be filled with Dverger. Hang out there, and over time, Mislin's monsters will kill all of the Dverger. It's inevitable, because they don't respawn. So eventually that'll happen after you destroy the ward, make a workbench, and also make a stone cutter. This stone cutter is gonna allow you to basically disassemble the whole place. And boom! With some patience, you'll gut the building. You'll be left with this really cool wooden frame. So you might wanna build something. We're talking blue jute, copper bars, black marble, and copper scraps. If you want to support my work, then check out my tutorial about purchasing your own dedicated Valheim server. You can also comment below if there's a tutorial you want me to make about Valheim. Other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!